7.5 earthquake in Taiwan. The biggest in many, many years. Look at that. Oh, help them, Jesus. Oh, how terrible. It just shows again just how much it's shaking. 7.5. Now, you get asked the question, you know, what what's what's the significance of this hitting right now and what's happening hey, there there's so much going on in the world and so much happening all at once we're going to get into a few of these things today i hope you can repost this and share this right now and of course i want to say a huge thank you to our partners and our friends and if you want to become part of our partner family as we talk about it on every single broadcast one uh to let you know because there's always new viewers and then secondly because there's so many scammers so thank you so much uh, if you want to become part Part of our partner family go to josephz.com do it today please because we will be calling you if you partner our team calls you and we will be praying with you regularly so it's very important so we stay in touch with you josephz.com that's how you do that and boy we'd sure love to welcome you to the family um Taiwan just had a major, major hit here. Uh, things taking place around it. I'm sure the news will just keep coming out with what's going on there. But, you know, we're seeing one cataclysmic event after another. It was just days ago that the bridge was struck uh, over in Baltimore. We see that happening. Now news is coming out of other uh, shipping industry things and bridges and all that. Now, the bottom line is there is something going on in the world and we're cascading towards a time of great change. We're cascading towards all of these things. As a matter of fact, let me show you another clip here talking about NASA. NASA says, you know, we got some strange events that'll be happening on April the 8th with this solar eclipse. And the guy actually calls it an ellipse, an ellipse. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. I'm going to show you this and then we're going to comment on it because I got a little bit more to also get into. So let's watch this NASA talking about strange events with the solar ellipse. Watch this. said that at NASA, our mission is for all humanity. And that's because space brings us together. There's no better proof than moments like this, a total solar ellipse. It's a moment when millions of people across North America will look to the heavens as the moon passes in front and between the sun of the, and the earth. And it's a rare sight that we haven't seen in seven years. Yep. And unusual things start to happen. As he starts the normal about rhythms things. of Earth are disrupted, when you're seeing this eclipse, you ought to observe this. As the day appears to turn to dusk and then dark, people have heard birds stop singing. They've seen giraffes suddenly begin to gallop. Roosters start crowing and crickets chirp. So watch for these unusual behaviors. And we encourage you to help NASA observe the sights and sounds. Yeah, unusual behaviors, cats and dogs living together. <laughs> That's that line from Ghostbusters, in case you don't know why I always say that, but cats and dogs living together, just anarchy, chaos. Here's the bottom line is you're recognizing that even NASA is saying there's going to be some strange things going on. I don't know why it bothers me when agencies say words like keep an eye out for strange things. Now you got that happening. You've got this, uh, this earthquake in Taiwan, which Taiwan itself is a, um, a very interesting place because of some of the geopolitical tensions that are happening with the red dragon and the way that that's going. So it's interesting that that broke out there. And so we got to keep our eye on this. We're going to be praying about it. 7.5 is no joke. It is a very serious 
uh, on the scale of earthquakes. So we we need to be praying for this. There's a lot with this. Of course, you know, if you've been following me for some time, that we've been sharing this word over and over again about a massive earthquake coming. And I believe that there's there's a lot more to this. We're going to see more and more of these events cascading forward as the seasons increase towards the very last of the last days, the last times. In addition to this, there's some, I, I don't know, my spirit man is, I've been having to pray more than usual, uh, just really spend time, which is good, but also to deflect all the nonsense that's going on in the atmosphere, what's going on supernaturally speaking <clears throat> with this springtime. And as many of you know, we're heading over to Turkey and we're going to be there for the seven churches going to each one of those. And then we are on our way to Noah's Ark. And it's amazing. This is wild. From the time of the eclipse on April the 8th, all the way up until the day of Pentecost is 40 days. That's the exact duration of our trip. Like the, pretty much the exact duration of the trip. And the Lord is speaking to me. I've been um, talking with some of my prophetic friends and, you know, just looking at it and saying, my goodness, this is wild that God's saying this or having us do it as a prophetic act. Now, one of the things I should bring out to us here, um, you know, and I'm, of course, I'm on, on assignment right now and I travel sometimes and thank you for helping us do it. But then here I am broadcasting to you. But let me just say, um, one of the things that's also happening, get this, is on April the 8th. Now, there's so much more we could get into with it. And before I even show you this part, I'm going to make a comment and then I'll expound on it, is that this eclipse is going to come and then it's going to go. And then we're going to move on with a whole another narrative. But it is a sign to this nation. There's a sign in this that we got to pay attention. I believe that we have a window of time to start correcting, or we may very well lose what we have, at least on a, on a measurable level. Okay. So let's take a look here. What, what I wanted to mention to you before I get into the expounding part is that among other things, the wicked lizard overlords over at Switzerland at CERN uh, have decided to fire up the Large Hadron Collider. You guessed it. On April the 8th, the same day as the eclipse, they want to fire up CERN. You got NASA saying, hey, these strange events are happening as NASA and others are firing rockets. I think there's anywhere from two to three rockets they're going to be firing into the shadow of the eclipse to test for soundings, they're saying. For soundings. So you got that going on. Then you've got the devil comet going by. You know about the devil comet? It's a comet with horns that's going by. You know, there's a lot of signs taking place <laughs> with what's ta what's happening in the world right now. So if we could, there's two ladies in this clip I'm going to show you, and uh, they're talking about CERN, and we'll take this with a grain of salt, okay, what they're about to say. Because they start talking about entities and openings and all this stuff. So you discern this, you be the judge of it. But nonetheless, this is circulating, and there's a lot of conversation happening around this. And just the fact that CERN wants to start up its Large Hadron Collider and create these little mini black holes that they can open up portals to other dimensions, as people speculate, fascinating. Let's take a look at what this commentary is here on CERN uh, with these two uh, ladies that are discussing, Dr. Astrid Stuckelberger. And uh, let's, let's listen to this just for a moment. Check this out. Actually, CERN is dealing with um, radio, radio nuclear research. But it is more than that because there are lots of physicians, I, have, I know some, they're doing very strange experimentation. There are beings from portals coming in and out. It's physicists from the CERN who told me this. They've testified so is, to beings coming in and out of portals. Yes. They have apparently in the bottom of the CERN uh, this, this portal, this door where they are dealing with all the subatomic uh, dimensions. They say there are 17 different dimensions of reality. That's what the, those physicists say. Some others say there are more dimensions, you know. And now, when you look at what is going on in the CERN, there is a fight from some of the military um, agencies, uh, Intel. They say that there is a, a, 
fight on time. They're trying to change time. time. Through wormholes and through all that stuff. Time. So, you know, I've always studied and I knew there was 10 dimensions, but now there's um, 17 or more they're saying. And really what they want to do is alter time or fight over time. Now, where this stuff starts and stops, you have to, you know, you got to take this stuff with a grain of salt because it's somebody saying, I know a person who knew a person. But yet there's, there's so much behind this. And if you've heard me talk on this for some time, you know, there's a lot of data on CERN. And now CERN is just one of their large hadron colliders that they're building, or they built some time ago. They actually started uh, putting out the World Wide Web from there. In addition to this, though, there's many other locations that are similar, and one they're building in China that is absolutely it's just, it's dwarfs this one. It dwarfs the one in uh, Switzerland. So, what are we dealing with here? What are we dealing with? We are dealing with a last days antichrist agenda where they're trying to usher in and usher us into this thought process of wickedness, uh, where they want to begin to open up dimensions and portals. Now, this is something worth saying. I'm going to go to the Word of God for a moment. When you look at what's going on with the signs of the times and it all coming to this great uh, <laughs> crossroads, so to speak, right up here in April. Um, and I just want to say to you that there's there's a lot to be said that we need to understand while we're looking at the, the times we're living in because it's important. One, one more time about CERN. Let me just say this to you. Here in Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, it begins to talk about the angel sounded and a star fell from heaven. I'm in verse 1, Revelation 9 and verse 1. And it says, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now it goes into the bottomless pit until finally you recognize it begins to talk about Abaddon. And it opens the bottomless pit. I'm all the way down to verse 11, uh, Revelation 9, 11, 9, 11, Revelation 9, 11. And it begins to talk about the king, uh, and they had no, as a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon. But in the Greek, he has the name Apollyon. And you recognize it's, it's a serious deal. It means destroyer. He's going to come up from a bottomless pit. Now, it's interesting. Uh, there was a man named Bartolucci. He was the former director of CERN about 15 years ago. And he's the one that said, uh, you know, we're going to be able to uh, receive things from CERN and pass things back through. And he was talking about uh, entities, individual stuff, you know, just stuff that could pass from one to the other. And so it's very fascinating when you look at this. Now, I've just got to say to us, when you start to look at the rhythm of where we're going, it seems as if there's one, and I believe a lot of this is man-made induced crisis after another, one after another. And these things continue to compound and they continue to uh, royal forward, so to speak, until there is a a collapse of modern civilization. And you say, well, really, could they do that? Well, they could, they'll try. They're going to try to push these, these agendas and envelopes. But I got to tell you, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we don't have to be pushed around by this. This wicked thug, evil demon spirit that's uh, working through what we sarcastically call the wicked lizard overlords uh, that are over there and, uh, you know, the World Economic Forum, everything from there to what's going on and uh, even the, the World Health scenario, which they're trying to push through a number of nefarious things right now uh, to get the United States to just shrink back and just do whatever they say, uh, giving up some of our liberties. Thank God we have the Constitution, but even that, uh, some things are going to happen there. I also believe very strongly we're going to be at a major, major crossroads. Now, we already are, but a major crossroads is coming, I believe, in 2025 economically. It's not a thus saith the Lord, but I have been praying and I see a scope on that. There's a scope and 2025 is in that scope. And I'm just praying against complete catastrophe and meltdown. So when we're looking at these kind of things, you don't get to fear, you don't get to shrink back and go, oh no, what are we going to do? But as we've said, there's going to be more and more of these things that begin to erupt and just begin to come forward. At the same time, I believe that we're going to see a, a pivoting response to this by the Spirit of God in May. 
I believe May is going to give us moments of uncovering, revealing, and there's going to be this absolute um, recognition that people have either been uh, in the wrong uh, area, taking bribery resources, or or uh, in making deals with bad adversaries, that kind of thing. We're going to see favor and God's going to begin to expose that. It's going to be seen in some areas, hidden, but still revealed privately in others. And I believe the Lord is working this out on our behalf. Now, we're praying. I'm praying because I believe what's going to happen in this coming cycle is that even if the former 45 gets in, that is when they're going to really begin to pull the pin on a number of things. And this is where we're going to really pay attention. And now if you're with us and you've been with us for some time, I got to tell you, sometimes the Lord shows us things in advance and I just do my best to try and, and make sense of what I'm seeing and saying. And, you know, it's important. It's important that we really begin to uh, pay attention at the, in the days that we're living in. So let me one more time draw this for you. <laughs> my portable vision board. Okay, here we go. Let me draw something for you. Here we realize I've drawn this, that this represents uh, the year we're in. Okay, so this is, um, if it's like a clock, you realize this is January, right? And we could call this July, okay? Um, we get into all these, these months of the year, and uh, these are quarters, okay? And we see where things are at with it. I believe that there's going to be a great... Uh, economic scenario that begins to be more and more pushed to the forefront. So I'm going to say this, you know, dollar signs going all the way around the the year. Uh, you see this happening more and more where they're talking about it, talking about it. Um, I believe this is part of the reason that people even on the other side of the aisle will even push for uh, 45 to go back in. Now, it's going to be a mess before and a mess after. And I think that they're going to try to hijack, uh, do nefarious stuff. Things are going to go one way. They're going to go the other. Um, I believe the only thing that can really break this through is prayer, intercession, intercession. Now, let's just do a hypothetical that if he goes back in, I believe that we're going to have more conversation on this. And I saw a for lack of a better word, like a dark November. Doesn't mean it's the end. It just means they're going to, I think people would just erupt. Now, let me put this here, another circle over here. So this is a year again. Okay. So we come around this time and I believe that we're going to obviously launch over into this coming year, 2025. And I think it's going to be a monumental year for economy, okay? I think that with the economy also, uh, we're going to see AI get involved with economics, okay? And I see the cycle of, you know, I've always said that this year, if you followed me, would be a year of fire, a year of fire, and I believe that that can be a fire that purifies and burns out the dross. It can be a fire uh, of damage and difficulty, but I believe this will be a year of fire. So I'll just put fire. Okay. A year of fire, 2025. 2026, I believe, is going to be a year of picking up sticks, a year of getting things back into order, um, but yet challenges all of it. So I see so much that's going on in the world, and I, and I believe the Lord wants you to live, move, and have your being, and not be afraid by any means, not by in any way be intimidated or pushed back into a way of trepidation or fear. And I got to say to many of you that are watching right now, have you noticed, have you noticed that there's a, um, a haze, almost like a fog and a weariness that's coming on people? Have you noticed that? Remember Lord of the Rings when, uh, when um, it's the the Fellowship of the Ring is splitting up. Now you go to the second movie and they're chasing all those, um, you know, creatures that are holding the hobbits. They're running with them. And Aragorn, the you know, somewhat the messianic figure, if you want to call him that, in the the film, looks at the companions and says, uh, or maybe it was Legolas, the. <laughs> the blonde elf, right? They're, they're there. And he begins to say, 
some unnatural force gives aid to these creatures. The fighting Urukai, right? The Urukai. He said something, some force, some unnatural force is giving aid to these creatures in their speed, their momentum. And they were like these demonic creatures. If you've seen these films or read the books where they have the hobbits and they're running, they're holding them. But here's my point. I believe there's an unnatural force from the realm of the demonic giving aid, like protecting these wicked leaders. It's like it's protecting them. The righteous get pummeled and the wicked almost get protected or not almost, they get protected by this unnatural aid that gives them momentum. But I say right now, come on. Yeah. I say right now, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over this nasty mess. We take authority over every wicked, demonic agenda trying to attack this nation. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, yes, there's exposure in the church because judgment begins in the house of God, almost cyclic. Whether it's annually or every few years, a judgment begins where the Lord begins to say, hey, wrong. There's been that happening. But then it goes from that to nations. I believe that there's going to be a great pressure. The heavens are charged right now with pressure. There's difficulty going on in the world. There's difficulty going on everywhere. And yet in all of it, hear me right now, in all of it, I'm being sent to the seven churches of Revelation over in Turkey. I'm on assignment. I'm going to be meeting with leaders, praying for people, you know, just God's putting me on assignment. And then several weeks out, going to the actual location of Noah's Ark in Turkey on the Iran border. Now, what in the world am I doing with that? To be honest, I don't fully know. I just know I'm supposed to do this. And the Lord is speaking to me that he's going to speak to me. <laughs> it's like, it's like when Abraham left his land and said, Lord, where are we going? He said, I'll tell you when you get there. <laughs> That's how I feel. And I'm doing this out of obedience. I'm thrilled that I get to see Noah's Ark. I'm thrilled that I'm doing these things. But with the times and April the 8th and the way things are going, and listen, April the 8th is going to come. It's going to go. The sign will remain. There's going to be a sign in this. But it's going to come, it's going to go. There's going to be either calamity or not calamity. The point is, is I believe the very fact that we're going to be doing something for 40 days as a prophetic act in this time, as a prophetic act, after God has called us up to America's mountain, and I've said this to you before, but it was about a year, just over a year ago that the Lord said to me, come up here, come up higher, Joseph, come up where I am. And it's a, it's a anointing to look into what's coming. It's like a watchman call, a prophetic watchman. And then all these things start cascading forward. And then the Lord calls us to America's mountain, uh, meaning just Colorado. We don't got to live on America's mountain or be, you know, right by it, but we're, we're close enough to go to it when needed. I sense something else happening uh, for this ministry, for this broadcast, for many of you. I sense the Lord saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to project you even further from my namesake, for my glory, to get the word out. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to team up with other apostolic leaders. I'm going to team up with other prophets. I'm going to team up with uh, pastors. I'm going to team up with broadcasters. Anybody I can that has a mandate right now to fight back against this nefarious darkness and rescue this nation. Because this nation needs rescuing. 
and you don't need to be depressed about it. You just got to get in faith over it. But we're going because I sense this, this scenario. I know that the Lord is calling many of you just to begin to intercede and pray. You know, one of the big things that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about is, if you know God's telling you to do something, do it. Don't hesitate. Do it. It's your protection. If you don't know what to do, well, then get busy about what you do know to do, what you know is productive in front of you. Just get busy with that. Get in faith. Get in the Spirit. Keep reading your Bible. Uh, read this book until it starts talking back to you. Stay in the Holy Ghost. And God will line you up with where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. I just got to tell you, I sense great pressure, great difficulty, but great victory too. Don't lose heart in this process. We got to be strong right now. Was it seven months? Going past seven months here? until we see the leadership changed again, one way or the other. And God's hand is on you. God's hand is on this time. We need to rise and shine. We need to be available for God to work through at this time, in this hour, at this juncture in history. God's called you. Listen, there's a reason I say every day, on a bad day, you're anointed, okay? That means God has marked you to be the very best there is. God believes in you. He believes in his church. As he is, so are we in this world. And we need to get busy about our father's business. I hope you'll be praying for us, praying for me. Because we got a lot to do. I'm on an assignment right now being very diligent to what uh, the Lord has called us to do. And I want to thank every one of you who stands with us. And I'm praying and pray that God speaks to you. Pray speaks to me so I can declare what, what we're supposed to be saying and sharing during these times. That sons of Issachar, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the sons of Issachar who knew uh, or they could discern or understand the times and they knew what to do about it. But, you know, number three, they also had their tribe with them. Their chiefs and their brethren were at their command. That's strong. That's really strong, actually. And God is calling you higher. That's what this is about. He's calling you higher. So as I go on this assignment, and we're going soon, I need your prayers. Of course, we got the whole team back. We got people watching everything. They're with everything, working diligently. We got a lot of great security. We got good stuff going on. I'm thankful. But I'm asking you to be praying for us as we go out and do this, because I know that God's calling us. I know God has put his hand on this. There's a prophetic assignment on what we're doing. And I just really need your prayers. I really do. I'm going to pray for you right now. Just before I do, let me say this. Partners, thank you. If you've been with us a long time, since the very beginning when there was only a few of us together on live broadcast for many years now, or if you've recently become a part of our partner family, welcome. We love you. But if you're watching and you want to become part of the partner family, you know, we don't demand any amounts. We don't demand anything to be a partner. We just ask that if it means something to you, that you do what is meaningful to you, what you can do. And uh, that's important. And we also understand that some people can't do it. And we love you. You know that. We love you. We're here for you regardless if you can or can't partner or help or any of that. We're just here for you. But if you want to and you're able to, please go to josephz.com right away. Become part of our partner family, and we want to stand with you. You'll hear from us. We'll call you. Our team will call you and pray with you. We want to pray with you. 
So I hope you do that at josephz.com and all the information's here. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, as we're getting closer and closer to all these signs of the times and difficulties and things, I begin to speak right now the peace that passes understanding, strength, victory, abundance, breakthrough, that Isaiah 10, 27, breakthrough come on their life right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, favor, victory, no fear, no anxiety, in Jesus' name. You're going to be okay. I know things are going to ramp up. I know it's going to get difficult, but God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. There is another day. I've drawn this a number of times, but it's the that drawing of where we are as a nation that I um, I'll probably expound on later again this week because it's in my heart to get on this. But you know, you, you've seen me draw this, right? You see me draw this as the USA, and that we're going into a time of darkness. 30, 60, 100 fold until this is complete. We're here. It's like a bottoming out to this season. In that same time frame, there's this storm, you know? I see the storm. I see revival breaking out in that storm. On the other side, I see reformation, reformers. And then a return, 30, 60, 100 and the new America, okay? Doesn't necessarily mean better. I'll quote Mario. God has decided he's going to rescue America, but we might not like that because what it's going to take. I heard the word justice and, you know, there's, there's going to be things that fall on the just and the unjust. There's rain. And I know that that also references the blessing of the Lord, but, you know, just for the typology of it, there's rain that falls on the just and the unjust. But you're going to outrun your enemy in the rain, in the, the things that befall the earth. There's going to be an anointing to outrun your enemy in the rain. And I believe there will be another day. Living to see another day, another time. I'm going to expound on that because I have something in my heart about it for this week. I need to be praying further with you. And Lord, I just bless everybody watching right now. I speak life over them. Went for some wild days, and yet you're here to meet it. And I want to say something else. There's a profound blessing on everybody that leans into the storm, that leans into it, that doesn't shrink back. But I see a profound blessing on you, provisionary, way-making anointing. I'm believing God for some very specific things because... Uh, I feel the unction to do so. And I can't wait to share with you more and more as that unfolds. Because a lot of it involves you. God's hand of favor. Listen, a man or woman with a revelation is not at the mercy of a culture gone mad. You are anointed of God to go through this time. And I'm going to be here with you through it all. We're going to be here. That's our commitment to you. Now, when I travel, sometimes I got to have guests. Sometimes I got to change it up. Now, if I'm, if I'm traveling uh, sometime soon and I'm traveling along and you say, man, the broadcast is different. If somebody's on here, man, I will be back shortly uh, or we'll change it up or whatever. But I, I'm doing everything I can because I'm following this prophetic assignment. And I hope you'll send me. I hope that you'll stand with us. JosephZ.com. I really do to invest in this prophetic assignment for this last day's narrative. I know this is serious days, but I don't feel like this is the end. I feel we have a little more to do. I could be wrong. <laughs> you know, everybody gets their eschatology mostly, right? <laughs> All I want to say to you is Jesus loves you and everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. It really is. Even if it's not okay, it's going to be okay because you have the Christ with you, the hope of glory, Jesus, the Lord. He's with you, King Jesus. And we love you. If no one's told you today, we love you. 
I'll be back again. I bless you, Jesus is Lord. On a bad day, you're anointed to be the very best there is. Please, if you would, watch this next part. I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning, or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it. And I hope you become a part of our partner family today. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God. And I want to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you into a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is going to really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com.